Big Jones Auto Repair, how can I help you? Hi, I own a Jeep Wrangler TJ and I'm a little bit concerned. This might sound a little bit odd, but uh, I've got an issue with my check engine light. Well, that doesn't sound weird at all, young buck. All you gotta do is get that down to the shop. We'll get a tester on it. We'll see why that check engine light's on for you. Yeah, see, that's what the last guy said too, but the problem actually isn't that the check engine light is on. And this is the weird part. I'm actually concerned that the check engine light is off. Like I said, I own a Jeep TJ and uh, it's been on since I've owned the Jeep. Uh, and now that it's off, I'm a little bit concerned. I'm not sure if you just burnt out or what I need to do to go from here, but I was just hoping for some advice from you. Hello? Hello? Hi guys, welcome back to Montana Off-Road. And while it's become a running joke in the Jeep TJ community that you need to be more concerned with your check engine light if it's off rather than on, Jeep TJs overall are super reliable vehicles that seemingly last forever. But there are some common Jeep TJ issues that you should know about, which is why in today's video, we're going over the top seven Jeep TJ issues that you need to be aware of. Number one, leaks. Jeep TJs love to mark their territory. And what I mean by that is they're notorious leakers. Some common areas that Jeep TJs love to leak are from the valve cover, remain seal, and transfer case. Fortunately, as long as you don't have a major leak coming from your engine or your transmission, and you keep an eye on your fluids to make sure they're topped off regularly, no further action is required. However, if you aren't diligent in maintaining fluid levels to ensure your components are properly lubricated, you could experience significant abnormal wear that can be detrimental to your Jeep. Moral of the story is to keep an eye on your Jeep's undercarriage for leaks and to make sure that you are checking your fluid levels regularly to ensure that you're getting a proper amount of fluid to your Jeep. Number two, unwanted sway bar movement. It is very common in these older TJs to experience unwanted sway bar travel when cornering. This is the result of your sway bar bushing no longer being able to hold your sway bar in place when the weight of your Jeep is being redistributed around a corner. You will more than likely know if you're experiencing this because when you're going around a corner, your upper sway bar disconnect bolt will actually come in contact with the frame, therefore making a very loud and obnoxious screeching noise. Fortunately, there's a pretty easy fix for this. By simply attaching a brace to either side of your sway bar bushing, you can eliminate any unwanted movement. I will leave a link in the description down below if you wanna check out a sway bar brace. Next, and the biggest worry of Jeep TJ buyers today, and number three on the list is frame rust. Rust can be a big issue for a TJ, especially TJs that are in the Eastern United States. But unfortunately, there are some common places on a Jeep TJ's frame that seem to consistently rust out. The most worrisome locations are the upper control arms where the rear axle meets the frame and also the body mounts, but everywhere in a Jeep's frame is susceptible to rusting. One quick tip if you're looking to purchase a TJ is when you go to inspect the Jeep, bring a screwdriver or something similar with you. That way you can knock around on the Jeep's frame to make sure that the owner is not trying to do something sneaky and cover up some problematic potential issues. I just did a video recently where I showed you how to fix and prevent future rust, and I'll leave a link right up here if you wanna go check that out. Number four, if you own a Jeep, you've probably heard the story or maybe even experienced the phenomenon known as death wobble. Well, death wobble is a very real and potentially dangerous thing that plagues many Jeeps. Fortunately, however, there are some steps you can take to reduce the chances of you experiencing this problem. Death wobble refers to your Jeep shaking in an uncontrollable and violent manner. Not to be confused with an alignment issue or normal road vibrations, death wobble will impact your entire vehicle, not just your steering wheel. In addition to your steering wheel moving quickly from side to side, you will feel like your Jeep is shaking apart. As a result, your vehicle will prove to be highly uncontrollable, which is a big problem and can cause some serious accidents. If you experience death wobble, you should do everything that you can to slow down as quickly as possible and pull over to the side of the road to avoid any accident. Now, death wobble can be caused by a couple of things, including poor suspension geometry, 
faulty tie rod ends, loose suspension components, and a few other things. So make sure you're getting your Jeep checked out regularly and maintenance regularly so you don't run into these issues. Now, as always, if you're enjoying the video so far, give me a Jeep wave by hitting that like button down below. Now let's get back into it. Number five, a leaky heater core. Now a heater core looks just like a small radiator and functions just the same. This is gonna be located right underneath your dashboard and it's what sends the heat to your blower motor to be able to heat your Jeep's cabin. Now this is a project that I decided to take on myself when replacing my heater core. The part itself is only $60, but you're gonna be paying north of $1,000 to have this replaced. And the reason for that is there's a lot of labor involved. So if you're a handy person who maybe could potentially do this yourself, you might be saving yourself a lot of money, but you're gonna be taking a lot of time to get this done. Number six, exhaust manifold leaks. If you own a 4.0 liter in your TJ, then it's only a matter of time before your Jeep is gonna start leaking from the exhaust manifold. Virtually every TJ from the factory from 1997 through 2006 ended up with these issues. Now this is a relatively costly repair, but if you have not had your exhaust manifold replaced in your Jeep TJ yet, then it's something that I would definitely plan for. Now there are a couple key signs of an exhaust leak with the first one being excessive noise. One of the key jobs of an exhaust manifold is to keep the sound of the combustion of the engine dampened. So if you are experiencing excessive noise coming from your engine bay, this is a very telltale sign. Now the second sign is reduced engine power. If you have a damaged exhaust manifold system, that's probably gonna play a factor in the performance of your vehicle. Now I had this done and it set me back about a thousand dollars, but I noticed a significant difference after I had it done to before. I actually gained quite a bit of power in my Jeep and it was a nice thing to have. And I got rid of that really annoying sound coming from my engine bay. And number seven, heavily modified Jeeps done by inexperienced do-it-yourselfers. Now this is especially important for someone who hasn't bought their Jeep yet and are planning to do so, but you wanna keep a close eye on the modifications that have been made to it. Now, a lot of Jeeps that are hitting the market today are already heavily modified. As a result, a lot of these modifications have been installed incorrectly by inexperienced amateurs. This can be a huge issue to the overall integrity of your Jeep, which is why I always recommend, no matter how experienced you are, to take your vehicle to a shop for a second opinion. Now, unfortunately, I'm speaking from experience on this one because about seven years ago, I went and bought a Jeep from a dealership that was already heavily modified, thinking this was gonna be a great deal. Well, after the purchase, I went and took it to a shop to have a few things inspected on it and come to find out the owner had put a lot of the modifications on the Jeep and he put them on wrong, which basically ruined the whole Jeep itself. So I ended up having to give that back to the dealership for a restocking fee and it didn't work out in my favor at all. So that inspired me to make this video right here where I talk about the top five mistakes that I've made since buying a Jeep. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.